Psalm 37, a Psalm of David. This would be a victory psalm if you were to give titles. Fret, that means rub, wear away by friction, to corrode, irritate. Fret not thyself because of, and my Bible so marked, evil doers. And we do, we look at unsaved people and we find it in the book of Job. Why are they prospering? Why are they doing so good? Why? And that's not the case. Maybe on the earth they're doing well, they're doing, but not in the eternal life. And David tells us, don't worry about it. We've got the victory. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You know, we look at people sometimes saved. We look at the world like they're, they're doing so well. And when we see people in the public, we don't see what they are in the private. They may look well. They may be fancy dressed. They may be throwing money out or whatever it is. But we don't know the heartache and the hardship they're going through. I mean, a lot of people, when you say, you meet somebody, well, how you doing? How you doing? And they'll say, good. And they're not really doing good. And their stomach hurts because they got anxieties and troubles and problems and acid build it up. Their heart is about to fail because of worries and concerns and trouble. And we don't know. Money is not the answer. Money gives more disease and troubles and problems than not having money. For they, the evildoers, and those workers of iniquity, shall be cut down like the grass. Quick. Boom. Laying on the ground. And wither as the green herb. Death. Death comes to all. But all those that are of God have a brighter, better, eternal life coming than those without God. Today for the Christian, if he dies, he's absent from the body and present with the Lord. <coughs> An unsaved man, he, he's, he's dead, he's buried, and he wakes up in hell. We have it better. So where's verses 1 and 2 Trust in the Lord and do good. And shalt thou dwell in the land. Now get that, the land that is never Christian. Never. The land is given to the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 12 tribes. When you see the promise of the land, a kingdom, we're not looking for a millennial kingdom. That's to the nation of Israel. Now, we'll be part of the millennial kingdom. There'll be Christians there who will get cities and kingship and lordship. But we're not looking for a land. We're looking for a city, New Jerusalem. And this is a vile, decoded, uh, not decoded, this is a vile message of some churches today, even Christians. We're looking for the land of America. We want the holy land. That's not ours. And that's the problem with the Catholic Church. They go out battling. They go out war to get a piece of land. That's not Christian. That's Jewish. And when you're out there to get a piece of land, you're stealing from the nation of Israel. You're stealing the promises that God's given to the nation of Israel. Only one group of people have God ever declared a piece of land. That piece of land is called Israel and is given to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That land, is not, we cannot claim that as Christians. And when, when the pilgrims came over and they became, you know, the, the black guy, the black headed guy, and they became the, uh, the congregational church, and they had the new Zion, the new, and they set forth in Massachusetts. They, they started off right. They set off Massachusetts. We're going to start this new land, this new kingdom. That's when they followed up. 
And they would use witches for, you know, killing witches. They would accuse you of being witches, you know, because the Bible says you're, you're to kill a witch, but we're just going to kill everybody against us. When you go after a land, you, and Jesus says, set the afflictions on things above, not things that, on the earth. And he's talking to the Jews, the ones that God said, hey, this land is your land. And America saying, this land is your land. This land is my land. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible for any, for any, for any, for any heathen or any Christian. You are stealing from the nation of Israel. America has no place in the Bible. I don't see it. People, hey, a guy told me the other day, you know, uh, you know, you can't think that Christians worship Donald Trump. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Like people worship uh, Obama. Like people worship their pastors. Like people worship other people, Hollywood, and all that. When you look at that land and you see that land and you mark your Bible that land, that land is Israel. That land is the promised land. That is not the holy land today. That's a piece of land that the Jews said about 33 AD, let his blood be upon us. And you have not read that where God said the blood came it cries out of your brother's blood. And the only way that that blood is going to be rectified is by the blood of the one that's slain it. In Jerusalem today, the blood of Jesus Christ cries out. And those Roman Catholics and those Catholics and the, the, the Arabians and the Jews will tell you, well, it was over here that Jesus died. It was over here that Jesus died. And all these different places. So you want to go to Holy Land? I am New Jerusalem. And I will come back to Jerusalem when Jesus is king. Jesus is seated on the David's throne. Then it will be the Holy Land. Not now. Don't you dare steal, steal that promise of the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. In the land to the Jews. We go running in here stealing promises from the Jews. That's just as bad as our Catholics do it. Delight thyself also in the Lord. That's for us. Bible says rejoice evermore. And he shall give thee desires of thy heart. Ooh, look at that. There's a name it, claim it verse. God ain't going to give you the carnal activity of your heart. James chapter 3, I think it is. 3 or 4. James says, listen, you, you ask not because you receive not. Okay, I didn't get it I didn't ask God. And then he says, you receive not because you ask to fulfill your lust. Scripture with scripture, God ain't going to give you your lust. And then he's talking to the nation of Israel. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Do what God tells you to do. That's good for any age. Trust, again, trust also in him, in your way that you go. Jesus will come up and say, I am the way. Trust in Jesus. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness. Well, there's thy. That's the nation of Israel that God said, be holy for I am holy. You're above any nation. There's no nation like you. There's no one chosen like you. You're a particular people. You're the people that are given the law, the judgment, the rights, and all the, the statutes. There's no one else given to but us. As the light and thy judgments is at noonday. That's the brightest. That's the bride that should be the. That's the time when Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He said, "This light shined above." Rest, relax, and wait patiently for Him. God is very long suffering. God is very patient, and I may not be. We may not be, but God is. 
Again, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. His way, not the Lord's way, not God's way. You know, you're waiting for God. And the, 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 the ungodly man, he's getting everything he wants. And then we start getting jealous. We start getting envious. God will fulfill in his time. God knows what is right. Who prospers in his way, not God's way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. You know why he's got his way? You know why he's prospering? Because he's cheated other people. Because he's had pride. Because he's boasted. Because he's lied. Because he's coveted. Because he's done everything wrong under the sun. You wait for God, you show patience, and when God gives it to you, it is not of sin, it is not of lustly desires, it is right and righteous and holy without guilt. And there's no condemnation when you do it God's way. You do it someone else's way, or, or the man does it his way, and found guilty. Cease from anger. Paul says, be, be angry, but sin not. You can be angry. But there's an anger on the sin. There's a step above anger, and it's different for everybody, that it becomes a sin. I am angry what the Roman Catholic Church system does to all its people and how it perverts souls. And I go out there and I, I try to reach Catholics. I try to deal with Catholics. I try to witness a Catholic. That's good. I'm not angry with them. I'm angry with their systems. Now, if I go into church and, stop and start knocking the statues over and burn the open altars and taking their hosts and walking all over it and breaking down the confession, then I've, I've gone too far. Then I sin. And forsake wrath. Fret not. There's that word again. Fret not. Thyself in any, in any wise to do evil. If you don't get so angry and you don't sin, you don't have to worry about doing evil. Fret not thyself. Don't worry about yourself. In any wise to do it, don't worry about being going evil if you do it God's way. And you'll show anger. Now, when we come back over to chapter 36, verse 4, last night, here's the wicked man. Here's the man of iniquity. Chapter 36, verse 4, he devises mischief upon his bed. This is not the godly man. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. We just read about him again, 37. He abhorreth, he hates, he, he just, not evil. Not evil. He hates anything that's not evil. He loves the evil. And over here, David's talking to a saint man. He said, don't worry about doing evil if you do it God's way and wait. For evildoers, verse 9, shall be cut off. Go to hell. That's what cut off means. When God told that Jew, you will be cut off from the nation of Israel. That's it. You're gone. Go ahead and live your left, rest of your life out. Live to be 200 years old. But when you die, that's it. You're gone. That's not a good cut off. But those things, I mean, but those that wait on the Lord, there's that patience again. They shall inherit the earth. And that's not us. The earth is given to the Jew. The earth is given to Israel. The earth is given to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why I say, when the heavens and earth are rolled up in the scroll in the fervent heat, and the Bible says, I see new Jerusalem, I see the new heavens, I see the new earth. That's why I say right there, the Jews get the new earth. Christians get the new Jerusalem. And I believe the Gentiles, the heathen that got saved before the law, during the law and in the millennium, I mean, well, yeah, the millennium and the tribulation, the heathen in those groups outside the church age, 
I believe they get the new heavens. See, God meant when he created all this, he meant everything to be inhabited. He never meant the moon to be as desolate as it is. But Adam and Eve sinned, and God's like, you just keep it on the earth. I mean, look through this like this. Let's say Adam and Eve never ate the tree, never ate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They never had death. How long would it be before you'd be standing on everybody's head with all the babies being born? Why did God make Jupiter, Mars, and all that? I believe he made them because if Adam and Eve would have done right, they would be populating the whole, everything. That's why we get the newer and new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. You think that's crazy? Well, a lot better than the Mormons who think they come from outer space. And that they'll, they have spiritual babies with all their wives and they, and they populate when they die, other planets. So, verse 10. For yet a little while, I think Jesus kept saying that, a little while, I'll be with you. The wicked, again, Mark, the wicked. I mean, if that reference goes to the, the Antichrist, shall not be. I mean, for the Antichrist, it'd be seven years, maybe three and a half. You take seven years, the whole, the whole tribulation period, when he comes in with peace. Or if you take the point where the desolation and abomination spoken by Daniel, and you got three and a half years. That's an interesting word there, a little while, that's studying the Bible. The wicked shall not be. What? He's gone. He's off the earth. He's not living. Yea, that's what Satan said. Yea, as God said. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. <laughs> Oh, that guy's got a beautiful house, beautiful yacht. It's going to be gone. It's going to be decayed. It's going to fall. It's going to rot. Somebody else is going to buy it. It's going to you know, be changed over. They're going to do makeover. They're, they're going to add their own thing to it. And if it's left desolate, it's going to rot and fall down. I had a house in Norwich, and I told that they redesigned the whole house to what it, what it looked like when we had it. But the meek shall inherit the earth. Now, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 5.5. 5. Jesus quoted from Psalms. So, Jesus is authorizing or Jesus is evaluating that what David wrote in Psalm 37 is true and proper. Men wrote the Bible. David wrote Psalm 37. Jesus, yep. And I quoted from it. And shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. That's millennium. That is millennium. The wicked, there he is again, Plot is against the just and gnash it. That is to, that is to set your teeth together in pain or anger. Oh, it hurts or I just hate it. The Bible says that's what they're going to do in hell. It's going to be so much pain in hell, they're going to put their teeth together. There's so much hate in hell. That's what Jesus said. And people say, well, you know, I'm just friends with them. I let my light shine. Blah, 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 blah. You're just being a wimp. You're a wall from Christianity if you're a Christian. And look what the Bible says about your friends who are not saved. The wicked plot is against the just. Are you saved? Yeah. Then you're just. That wicked family, that wicked friend, that wicked co-worker, that wicked whoever it is that you're just friends with because you don't want, they hate you. And when they act like they're friends with you and they're just lovely dovey, they're lying to you. They have deceived you. 
And they're flattering you. And those are all marks of an unsaved person in the Bible. And you're falling for it. And gnashing upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him. I can't even imagine what God sounds like. I can't even imagine what God would sound like laughing. That sounds scary. When God is laughing at you and it's not for good. For he seeth that his day, the wicked day, is coming. You know, people hate to be, you know, they always say, are you laughing with me or at me? God's laughing at you. The wicked have drawn out the sword. Could be literal sword. It could be war. And have bent the bow. There's a bow in there. That's probably war. To cast down the poor and needy. Well, what have they done? Gotta hate somebody. Sometimes the poor and needy are God's people. Because they're not getting the promotions because they're holy. They don't have the meat because, you know, they're, they're the Christians. They'll be past. The, listen, I have been fired from two jobs. And they're so wimpy, they won't say they fired me because of a Christian. They, they found other aspects. But I've been fired from two jobs because I was a Christian. I had one job. They were, kept trying to fire me. They kept trying to find a way to get rid of me because I was a Christian. And they couldn't do it because Stolly was just so good. <laughs> And you won't believe the, the stupid thing they finally got. They had no control of them, but we used it. Yes, I have been fired for being a Christian. And they didn't have the, 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 the strength to tell me to my face. Unofficially, I think the words were. But on documentation and papers, something else. To slay such as be of upright conversion. That's an interesting word. That's the first time that word shows up, conversion. The minute you get saved, you get an enemy, the devil. Have you ever read uh, Pilgrim's Progress? That devil steps up the creek. The, you know, Look at all the things you've done since you, you've been right. You know, you've gone against them. You went to the slaughter and, and you turned your back against them. Why would God love you? And then you've gone against me. The devil hates when you turn to God. And he's got a whole mass of army ready to go after you. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. They'll reap what they sow even more. Their, their bow shall be broken. And that's the second Advent reference. They're going to be fighting against Jesus and they're going to lose. Now they're going to kill a multitude of Jews in the tribulation period beyond what Hitler ever done. And the Bible says in heaven will be the, the, the beheaded ones underneath the throne. But God will get his victory. God will cast a false prophet, the Antichrist, and the devil into the lake of fire forever. A little that a righteous man has, he's not rich, is better than the riches of many wicked. And the illustration you find in the Bible is when Jesus is in the temple, he's by the treasury, and the woman brought her two mites. There it is. It's not perfectly good, but there's a woman with two mites. Jesus said that woman gave more money than everyone who gave of their abundance. I don't think Paul was a rich man by the, the standard of money of Rome and, and Israel. But man, he had great blessings. I don't think Peter was a very rich man. But he's sitting in prison and he's on, he's on death row. And he's in prison, not half asleep, fully asleep. And the Lord's going to smack him in the face. I mean, he's at peace. Little is much when God's in it, I believe the song is. 
For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. That is true of the Antichrist. He gets a right hand arm injury and a right, right eye injury. But those arms are the strength, the holding thing, maybe the military too. Listen, if your arms, plural, are broken, you can't hold nothing. You can't pick up nothing. You have no strength. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. He'll take care of those that are right. Don't you worry about the wicked. Don't you fret yourself because of that. God will take care of them and God will take care of you. While you're enjoying your mansion in heaven as a Christian, they'll be in a dark place, gnashing their teeth. And they're not even going to have a care in the world. As far as you and your mansion in heaven, look at the rich man. That rich man was still ordering people. You imagine going to a place in hell where they're still ordering other people around in hell in their anger. I'm going to go where my friends are. Your friends wouldn't have anything to do with it. And then they're going to demand of you. They're going to use you. Try to use you. The Lord knows the days of the upright. He has our days counted. Now, I've said before, we can lengthen our days as that king. You know, he, he pleaded to God. God gave him 15 years. And you can cut your life of your, of your life before Lord, the Lord has your days. You can get involved in sin. You can do something and just, you know, let your, be not deceived. God's not marked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. You get involved with a sin that can destroy your body. God says, okay, fine. I hate to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and say, you know what? Whatever that sin was, it killed you at 40 years old. Man, I had you live into 90. I was going to take care of you till you were 90 years old. I was going to bless you. I was going to, going to, you wanted to sin. You wanted to do that sin. You had all the aggravations of that sin. You had all the evil that followed that sin. I was going to take care of you. I believe every Christian has a point where, the, where God says, okay, at this age, I'm going to have this man live and I'm going to take him home. And I believe every Christian with a particular sin, whatever they get, we lessen that day. Then we may go beyond God and say, you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make that day, I'm gonna make that year higher. That's what I believe. And their inheritance shall be forever. To Israel, that's the land. I believe it's the new earth. Now, as Christians, our inheritance, the Bible said, we will be kings. Jesus is the king of kings. Who's those kings? Us. Who's the king? Jesus. There'll be lords, but who's Jesus? The Lord of lords in the millennium. Is that a forever reign of Christians? No. Well, what do you mean? At the end of the thousand years, the devil was loose. He gets his army. Devil, pff, you're, you're gone, God tells the devil. And then the heavens and earth flee away, then the great, then the great white zone judgment. We're not going to go to New Jerusalem and have kings, have we be kings and lords of lords. We'll get into all this mess again. And the disciples kept telling Jesus, well, who's the greatest of us? Who's the best of us? Who's the... Jesus like, give me that little child. There's only one king and there's only one royalty in New Jerusalem. That is Jesus Christ and God the Father, not any of us. We get the inheritance in the millennium of the Jewish people. You don't like it? Well, go on your battle horse and get your guns and go fight your way and you lose and you find out before God. I never had that plan for you. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. That can be true for a Christian with the fruits of the Spirit. I've been through trouble. I've been through problems. And I've had the fruit of the Spirit get me through. People don't understand me right now. I'm a widower again. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And people, well, you know, you're saying things, you know, yeah, uh, you're just, I'm not discouraged. I am so happy, great in the Lord. You don't even know how wonderful and great I am. But in the physical part, I'm unhappy. 
But I'm happy. But I'm unhappy. I don't feel like I'm sinning by asking God for another wife. And I don't think I'm sinning by, you know, you don't like my post, you know, like, then just turn it off, unfriend me, and go off. I'm just speaking my mind before. Listen, Facebook, I say it before Facebook, it's cheaper than a psychiatrist. David, God wrote down, or David wrote down what he had to say, and it's in the Bible. I write down what I say, and I, I try to help other Christians. Listen, I just do on Facebook what anybody would do in a diary. We just put it out to the public today. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. You know, America was right at one point in time. When we went through the Depression, there was no good for the money. But there was food. There were soup kitchens. They were fed. I never understood when my grandparents talk about the Depression. I never understood there was no money, but there was always food on the table. And I don't understand when the Depression, there were no jobs, but there were plenty of kids in a family. You know, they had, well, they had no jobs. so They had 10, 11, 12 kids in a family, and they had food. And the nation was right towards God. You ever say that America was no, I'm not saying America wasn't right with God. I say America was right. Because look what God did. And we told God, you know, we're gonna turn off the tap, we're gonna turn off the cage. We don't want any, we don't want any alcohol. Prohibition. Oh, I like that. And then we say, well, you know what? We'd rather have our alcohol. And God's like, okay, fine. I'll just get rid of your crops. And God made the big dust bowl. And America started going downhill. We tried to help England. We sort of helped the Jews in World War II. Guys, okay, you're, you're blessing. I'll bless you. We just wanted to get in the war. But that's a whole other different statement. God will take care of us. And as far as a Christian today, if we die in starvation, absent from the body, present with the Lord, I guarantee somewhere in this world today, there's a born-again Christian saved by the power of God, and he's doing what he can do, and he's starving to death. He's being tortured. Don't believe me? You have not read Fox's Book of Martyrs. You have not read Richard Warnberg's book. You have not read the stories of Christians suffering, especially in Islam nations, especially in China, especially where the Bible is, per is perverted and prevented by nations. <clears throat> but the wicked, there he is again, shall perish, dead. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him should not perish. God does not want you to be wicked. How do you know that God doesn't want you to be wicked? He gave his son. And if you believe on the son, you don't become wicked. There it is. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat lambs. What do you do with fat lambs? You chop them up and you put them on the grill. Lambs were allowed to be eaten by the Jews. Now, you would take that lamb meat, you take it off the grill and eat it. But for the wicked, leave them in the grill. Leave them burning. They shall consume. Now, the consumption here is the, the physical body. But as far as the wicked, the soul, it's never consumed. Into smoke shall they consume away. The Bible says the smoke of hell, the smoke of the torment of the fire forever. Forever. And it's in the presence of God. And that's what the, the brazen altar at the at the tabernacle was to represent. When you brought that meat, the Bible says that tabernacle is to be a fire that never went out. There's a fire that and that fire is out today, but there's a fire that never goes out, that will never go out, that will never go out, and that's the flames of hell. The wicked borroweth. He, he asks, can I have some money? Can I have some money? Can I have some money? 
and payeth not again. Now, some people say, you know, your bills. That, that's a very thin line I'm not even going to talk about. We are to pay our debts. But the reference here is borrowing. But we pay our debts. But the righteous shall, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Not only do we ask for money and then we pay it back, but we give money. You know, a Christian comes up to you and says, you know, I, I need $20. Well, here, I got it here. Uh, or I got 15. I, I give you what I have. I, I, I don't know. They come to you and say, well, here's a 20. For what? Well, you let me have $20 last. Don't worry about it. Oh, come on. I, don't worry about it. Let me pay. Don't worry about it. For such as be blessed, happy of him, shall inherit the earth, that's the Jew, and they that curse of him shall be cut off. Now, what group of people have you known in the Bible to say, I will curse them that curse you? There's the reference. Inheritance of the earth and cursing upon who curses, there's the Jew. You know, the church today, they're fascinated by land. Look how good our building is. It ain't Christian. I've had a few people tell me, you know, they go against their, their past. The pastor truly has gone against the scriptures, and they've gone to the man with the Bible, and shown, and they'll say that part in Psalm, you know, touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. That ain't you. Especially if you're perverting the Bible. As a matter of fact, if it is true, that guy's done what's right because Jesus said, hey, you got a problem against your brother. A pastor is your brother. If he's saved, you go to him one-on-one. -on -one. And then, you know, I heard the pastor get offended. I've heard the story. I've heard both sides. And I believe the pastor's wrong. But how dare you tell him? Okay. Uh, Nicolaitism now. But... That cut off for the Jew, you're done. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now there's that good again. But David's been showing us the wicked man, David's been showing us the good. What's the good man is, of Psalm 37? Not somebody that I'm good, I do good. David said, Those that follow God. And if you're following God to be a good man that follows God, you walk in the steps of God. I walk, the, I walk the footprints of Jesus. I got the footprints of Jesus' poem. I'm not talking about that. That's not exactly what I'm not talking about. I'm talking about that God says, okay, I want you to go from this point A to that point B, and this is the path I want you to take, and you get to point B, and you take in the path without going anywhere else that God said. That's walking the footsteps of Jesus. Listen, the footsteps of Jesus, when he was on this planet, from the time that he could walk to the time that he went to, to the empty tomb, everything was all pre-planned for Jesus. He never stepped outside the footprints of God's plan for him. Me, I was saved 1987. There was a time in my life, I don't know what year it was, my footsteps went in the world. And then I came back and got right with God, and I started been walking since. When I went backslide, when I went against God, that is not the footprints in the sand. That's the footprints in the world of being a sinner. The steps of a good man are ordered by, Lord, where do you want me to go? That's walking by faith. That's when you get to heaven, you hear, well done. Paul says, I finished my course. I, I have come to the end of the race. I'm done. I'm going to get a crown. That's the footsteps of the Lord. You know, and Paul stepped outside the will of God. He said, how did he do that? God told him three times, don't you dare go to Jerusalem. God wanted Paul in Rome. And Paul had to take a very long trip around, the, around to Rome. And I forget how many years he lost sitting in prison. Fighting with the judicial system of the Romans and the Jew Jewish people. The 
The footprints of God, Paul did not follow all the way. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his, his God's ways. And that way, today's Jesus Christ. And God's just so happy. Are you walking with Jesus Christ? Wants you to walk. Well, I, know, I got my own. Then God's not happy with you. We're to walk in the way of Jesus, and the way is Jesus. And every Christian has a different walk. Even if you got a husband and wife, I mean, they, they go together. They're one, but you know, there may be a ministry between the two. Are you going where God wants you to go? Well, you see, you know, I walked in the footprint and I looked back and I saw one set of prints. I said, God, you know, why did I see one? How dare you even ask God why? But, you know, that's where I carried you. If God is carrying you, then you're not walking. And if you're not walking, what were you doing? Floating. I was in the arms of Jesus. Come on. Really? I probably lost some followers now. You're going to walk. Walk. Walk with Jesus. And sometimes faith, that next step, you don't see where that step is. Pilgrim's Progress. That's faith. When you put that foot down, you don't know what even that foot is. That's faith. That's the footprint that the Lord wants you to do. Though he fall, you're going to fall. Look at that. Paul fell. I fell. He shall not be othered cast down. He'll pick you up. For the Lord upholded him by with his hand. And you go walking again. You get on your feet and you go. The Romans 10 says that God loveth the feet of them that carry the gospel, the good tidings. I have been young. And now I'm old, David speaking. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. That's a great testimony. I've me, I've seen the righteous not forsaken. I've seen God take care of them, and I've seen the righteous forsake God. There's a big difference between you forsaking God and God forsaking you. And when you say God has left me. Make sure it's not you that left God. And when you take off on God on another path, another step, God stopped where you turn. I know this. I've had this happen. And God will wait for you to come back where you left off. And you'll come back with more baggage. Nor his seed. Begging for bread. I have Proverbs chapter 20 verse 13. And chapter 9 verse 5. He is ever merciful. And lendeth. And his seed is blessed. And there's that, that blessing of giving. And we saw that in verse 21. Lending gets a blessing. Merciful gets a blessing. Depart from evil. And David says, don't get angry anymore wrongly and depart from evil. And do good. That's the second time he said that. So David wants you to do good. And dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment. And forsaketh not his saints. That's us. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee, Jesus said. They are preserved, kept up forever. But the seed of the wicked, there he is again, shall be cut off. See the cut off? Hell. No hope. The righteous shall inherit the land. See the land? Who's that? Israel. 
and dwell there in for even ever. My Bible's marked again. That's why I said they get the new earth. I believe. I shouldn't say. I don't mean that it's a firm thing. That's what I believe. The mouth of the righteous, that's me, speaketh wisdom. So when you speak foolishness, when you speak stupidity, when you speak dumb things, Jesus said, by every word shall man give account thereof. Every idle word. Idle words is not wisdom. And his talk, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Now, how do I know that? Because when I go out there and witness it and preach the gospel, eventually somebody will come along and say, judge not, we should be judged. <laughs> now, where did they get that from? Psalm 37, verse 30. They're telling me I'm judging. And I tell you, yep, Psalm 37, verse 30. The law of his God, the one that's doing right, is in his heart. If it's not in your heart, you're not saved. If it's if you got a head salvation, you're not saved. If you just got, I just said this prayer salvation, you're not saved. It's got to be in your heart. But with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, Paul said. None of his steps, there's a walking, there's a walking, shall slide. Excellent. But David already told us we will fall sometimes. The wicked, there he is again, watches the righteous. He sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're awake. And seeketh to slay him. You know, if you're involved in any public ministry, I don't, I don't care what... I, Every public ministry with the, with the gospel of Jesus Christ is correct. You know, you, you shouldn't say, well, I don't like door knocking. I don't do door knocking, but I'm, I, my legs. If I had my legs, I'd probably go do it. I have fear of door knocking. I get the fears about it, but I preach on the street. Some of them say, well, I don't preach on the street. Well, give out gospel tracts. But any public ministry that you have, there are people out there that hate you. And they would love to kill you if they had the chance. I said that a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And one of the guys that likes me at the, where we preach, and he laughed. And I said, it's true. You realize in America, the Constitution of the United States of America allows us to preach or witness or pass out gospel tracts. And if not... If there was no constitution of, of, of America giving us the freedom of religion, now we try every Christmas Eve, we try to go to the Catholic church, not in the Catholic, on the, the sidewalk of the Catholic church. We try to present the gospel to them going to their mass. I told my daughter, I said last year, I told my daughter while we we're there, I said, if there was no constitution, I said, they would drag us inside that church, they would beat us, they would torture us, and then they would kill us, and everybody in the church would laugh and enjoy it. That's ridiculous. You don't know church history. And those very things happen in American soil, too, with the Congregational Church, and I forget what... Uh, no, I'm not because I don't remember what church was down south that did it. But the Congregational Church up north did it to, to the Baptists or Separists. Oh, I'm just friends with the unsaved. They don't want to be friends with you. If they had an opportunity, they would kill you. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. God will take care of us. What do we have for the Christian day? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to, con to, to, to cleanse us of our sin. And to, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of our sins. And if we put him under the blood of Jesus Christ, he ain't going to judge us for our sins. Because they're clean. We judged our sins. Wait on the Lord. Oh, I hate that patience. Wait on the Lord. And while you wait on the Lord, keep his way. 
David's saying, if the Lord's going to give you something, if the Lord's going to bless you, don't cheat, don't connive, don't steal, don't do anything outside the will of the Lord. Let the Lord give it to you righteously. Don't you dare do it worldly. Don't you do it sinningly. Don't you do it after the devil. Don't you sell your soul out. You do it God's way, God's timing. And it'll be all good. He shall exalt thee to inherit the land, Israel. When the wicked cut off, millennium. There it is. When the Antichrist is, is put in the false prophet are put in the lake of fire and the devil is chained for a thousand years, Israel gets the land. There it is. Thou shalt see it. We're going to watch the Antichrist and the false prophet get cast into hell. And we're going to watch Satan get bound up for a thousand years. We're going to see it. The Jews will see it when Jesus Christ comes back. I have seen the wicked. There he is again. In great power. Yes, they are. And spreading himself like a green bay tree. There's a tree type of the devil. And Jesus spoke about a tree and spoke about the birds in the tree. And he said, they just spread out. The roots. The tree, a big green bay tree spreads out and it makes other little green bay trees. Yet, yet he passes away, death. And lo, he is not. Where is he? Yay, I saw him. <laughs> David, you saw the wicked guy? Look at that. But he could not be found. <laughs> Not quite interesting, David. What are you doing? <laughs> He's dead. He's gone. He ain't coming back to bother you no more. You'll probably get another enemy, but that one's gone. Mark the perfect man. And that perfect not that does not mean 100 percent That perfect means you are doing the best you can with the ability that God's given you. And you still, you flaw through, you fail, and you get right back with God, and you keep walking. That, that's the whole characteristic of this song. You fall, you get back up. You slide, you get your footing back up. You wait patiently on, on God. You do that which is right. There it is. That's the perfect. Behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. That's not cut off. But the transgressors, there they are, shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked, there he is, shall be cut. There's that cut off again. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, not cut off. He is their strength in the time of their trouble. When you got trouble, turn to the Lord. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He, God, shall deliver them from the wicked, <laughs> there's our enemy, and save them. That would be also second advent. But because they trust him. You know why God helps you? Because you trust him. You know why God helps you? Because he's the enemy. It's plain and simple. 